Should you buy Gears of War 5 in 2022? So when did Xbox become capable to release a actually good exclusive game that happens to be on PC as well? I'll tell you when. September 2019, when Gears of War 5 released. The only reason I even considered playing this new Gears of War game was thanks to a comment left on a community post asking for game recommendations, and thank god I did. Gears of War 5 is a nostalgia blast with a lot of new expensive paint that really surprised me and left me wanting to return to the original Gears of War games, which is a big compliment. I've only played Gears of War 2 and a bit of 3, so if you guys want reviews on the originals, let me know. I'll just need to find a way to play them. Probably have to buy an Xbox, but I don't got the money for that. But I will get it. I will get it if you guys want it. If you're new here, we start with a story and then we move on to gameplay with no spoilers whatsoever. I try and avoid as many spoilers as I can. Spoiler reviews will be coming soon though. I went into Gears of War 5 knowing that a lot of people really hated the marketing for it. We all remember that really bad Billie Eilish trailer weird thing, I don't know what that was about. And apparently they switched the focus from the character of JD, who is the son of Marcus, to a character called Kate. And to be brutally honest with you, I can definitely see why people weren't happy, especially with the 180 turn of JD's character at the start of the game. Even I knew that, because the intro of the game you actually play as JD, and uh, his character for some reason just changes in a heartbeat because time and plot. That being said, I actually really like Kate. In fact, all the characters here are pretty fleshed out and really enjoyable to be around and more importantly are really interesting. The dynamics built over the course of the game with these characters really surprised me because it's just quality. I really expected a basic story with minimal character focus and more plot focus with epic set pieces, but that's not really what we got with Gears of War 5, but we did get set pieces. About three-fourths of Gears of War 5 is more of a mystery rather than action blockbuster, which also caught me off guard. Kate, our main character here, is connected to the Swarm for some reason, so we go on this pretty awesome adventure to figure out why and how this is possible, resulting in some really cool character moments for Kate, and that layer of mystery really upgrades those small moments and keeps the story interesting and it keeps it going at a steady pace. I also came into Gears of War 5 with no knowledge of 4, so I really expected to be confused, but Gears 5 does a really good job explaining the events of Gears of War 4 at the start and the impacts it had on characters while also providing a ton of world building throughout, which by the end I felt like I had played 4, because Gears 5 simply does a great job of pulling new players in, so if this is your first Gears, it honestly is not a terrible place to start, it's not ideal, but it's not one of those games where you have to sit there for the entire game just trying to piece together the story so you are on the same pace as the characters. It does a very good job explaining it all, and I'm talking from experience because I don't remember anything from Gears of War apart from the gameplay. The writing overall is Sony exclusive quality for me in a lot of aspects while just missing the mark to be up there with the Uncharted's or God of War 2018, but Gears 5 gets damn close. And we're going out there. Yeah, okay, I get it. Unfortunately, the last couple hours do lose that character focus to become more of a generic action-adventure thing to make the ending as epic as possible, but with the 10 hours of character development we get here, the ending hits pretty hard if you end up caring about most of the characters, which I did. The jokes hit, the dark and deep moments hit, the slow moments hit, and the action hits. This is simply a great story and the best story to come out of an Xbox exclusive in a long time that I have played. Just a quick update for all the subs, I will be live streaming soon for the first time and I want to see what games you guys want me to play, so hop on my community post and let me know, and it is also a community event for the first time, so we'll all be playing together hopefully, and I'm trying to figure out a game that's right to do that, so I'll keep you updated. And if you are new here, join us, subscribe, what's the worst that could happen? Gears of War 5 is an Xbox 360 game with a beautiful coat of paint, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Sure, you could say it's a game in the wrong generation, that the generations have moved on, but there's a reason games like this were so popular in the 360 generation. It's because it simply works. It's a safe, but extremely well-executed third-person shooter with some updated gameplay elements providing a pretty good gameplay loop, so let me explain why. Exploration is a much bigger focus this time around. Previous Gears were a straight up linear story focused kind of game, with minimal exploration, but here there are two main areas you can explore which provide side content and upgrades you can unlock for the new AI companion called Jack. This does pad out Gears 5 a bit, but not to the point where you think you're wasting your time, and it's quite a nice addition to be perfectly honest with you. 
It's not an open world game. Think more of God of War 2018 rather than GTA 5. Each of the two main areas, so you've got one in the desert, which is the red place you're seeing right now, and then you've got one in, uh, uh, uh well, I'm just gonna say it's Antarctica. It's not Antarctica, but it, it looks like Antarctica, doesn't it? So we'll say Antarctica. Let's go with Antarctica. Those two areas have four to five areas you can explore, that I explored anyway, offering upgrades for exploring and wiping out the enemies present there. Sure, some people won't like this, but you can actually just skip past it. The upgrades are not essential, but they are really nice to have and add some spice to the dated gameplay loop. Customization has a slightly bigger focus than previous gears. If I remember correctly, there was no customization, but I may be wrong there in previous gears. The customization is fully focused on Jack's abilities, and you can choose which ones to equip as well as which upgrades to upgrade first. And while that's like the bare minimum of customization, and some people wouldn't even call it customization, it's nice to have it and can add some small bits of replay value to Gears of War 5, which, you know, linear games desperately need replay value, and that's what it does. Level design is actually really good though, you've got various areas to explore, each with their own unique design and gimmicks to keep the gameplay fresh. Enemy placement, while a little dated, are still challenging enough and unpredictable, which is pretty important, and this is helped greatly by the surprising amount of verticality that's at play in almost every area you visit. It forces you to choose whether you're a close-up and personal kind of shooter with, you know, shotgun that like gets gore everywhere, it's nice, or a long-range one-tap kind of sniper, which adds a bit of replay value to the gameplay loop, a bit like the customization. It's one of the few things Gears of War 5 does very differently from the 360 games, and that change of verticality, that added tiny added bit of customization, can actually give you another playthrough. I wouldn't say you're gonna play this game three, four times, two at the max, but the point is, you buy the game, and you've got two playthroughs, and you're going to enjoy every second of it. I'm aware that in Gears of War 4, the level design was pretty awful. You'd often walk in, and you'd see cover, and immediately know where the enemies are coming from, how many there would be, etc, etc. So I'm happy to say I experienced almost none of this, apart from the first hour or two, so the criticisms were heard, and it is definitely not an issue here in Gears of War 5. So yeah, the level design is pretty great while still a little dated. Like I said, this is basically an Xbox 360 game with a nice coat of paint. And I don't think anything's wrong with that. In fact, I kind of prefer these games, to be perfectly honest with you. I love the I love the innovation with the newer generations and stuff like that. But there's just something about those very simple 360 PS3 games that uh, it's just so chilling to uh, just to play through. You know, you can just sit back, your mind goes dead or whatever, and you can just relax. I don't know, something, something quite special about it, I think. But that's just me. I'm just a weirdo, mate. Gunplay and enemy variety is classic Gears of War. It's a cover shooter with a surprising amount of enemy variety, some of which are so damn cool, but we will talk about that in just a second. You have a bunch of weapons to use. You've got your usuals, your lancers, your shotguns, your snipers, your semi-automatic rifles. Your, your, you've got unique snipers with, like, you can load two bullets and at once it's really cool and you got a bunch of special abilities with other weapons too jack has plenty of upgrades as well you've got four main abilities and you can upgrade them there's one there's one that's called the flash it's like a flashbang but if you upgrade it you can actually freeze your enemies and you combine that with the improved level design with it just creates some really great third person shooter gameplay that is incredibly addicting but where gears has pretty much every third person shooter single player shooter linear shooter by the balls is the enemy variety Enemy variety is fantastic here. You have your usual grunts, along with these crazy little creatures that charge you to explode next year, along with enemy snipers, you got brutes, you got huge giant spider-like creatures with fucking machine guns on top of them, as well as AI robots that you can stealth kill, and of course there are some pretty awesome boss battles, there are some really cool ones. Each enemy type is lethal if you don't keep your wits about you. I especially hate the guys with shotguns because they come charging at you with no brain so you can't chill out and they, they will kill you. If you let them get close enough, they're gonna kill you. They are unforgiving and will make you feel like a moron if you're not on your A game. AI is pretty good, sure, enemies charge you like idiots sometimes, but the majority try to flank or stick to cover most of the time and throw grenades, so it's definitely not Saints Row 2022. These enemies actually take cover. You know, that, that was missing in Saints Row 2022. The same can be said for your companions. They are actually useful here and will revive you and finish weakened enemies most of the time. Gears nails that feeling of being in a squad even when you're not in co-op. One boss battle really stuck out to me because it came out of nowhere and explained almost nothing. Figuring out how to beat this giant monster was just super exhilarating and you know it's one of those moments where you, where you just about beat it and you're just like, 
oh bloody hell and you take a break and you just sit there and just like yeah i'm i'm the shit i'm i'm the guy i i just killed that guy come on no one's gonna mess with me and then you play multiplayer now i played like two matches of the multiplayer and i quickly realized it was not for me as most of us would say i need to get good but i just i can't be asked i remember having a blast on gears of war 2 specifically one mode of map it was like a split map with two sides and a bridge connecting them which create this really cool sniping and um and rushing gameplay loop that i really liked but i was never a massive gears multiplayer guy when i had an xbox 360. i had a blast with gears 2 but the multiplayer here just seems really bare bones to me there seems to be only three game modes and doesn't seem to have much longevity baked into the multiplayer i'm not going to criticize the gameplay or anything because i didn't spend enough time with it but for me this is just not it chief all in all, without the multiplayer, the Gears of War 5 is a fantastic Xbox exclusive that's both beautiful but basic yet sticks to landing almost 100% of the time, becoming one of my favourite games that I've played all year despite the aged gameplay loop and the fact it's an Xbox 360 game. You should absolutely buy or give Gears of War 5 a shot on Game Pass. In 2022, of course. Thank you for watching.